I don't think there's anything wrong with the jump cut. I like using the jump cut. Now granted, you don't want every single word to be uh, jump cut because that would be kind of annoying. You know what I mean? What's up YouTube, it's your boy, BMAC. You have to bear with me today. Still uh, dealing with a little bit of a cold, but that doesn't mean the hustle stops. New daily video, let's go. Today we're gonna go over a very important part of my videos, the infamous jump cut. I'm gonna take you inside my video editor to show you exactly how I make my jump cuts in my videos. What I think is the professional way of utilizing the jump cut and how it could improve the overall flow and production quality of your video. So first things first, why the jump cut? It's no secret that there are thousands of people, thousands of YouTubers who enjoy using the jump cut and then you have thousands of people who absolutely hate the jump cut with a burning passion, made it very well known that they hate it in the comments section of some of my videos. Personally, as you can see from watching my videos, I use the jump cut a lot. I think it helps out with the flow of my videos. I think it helps maintain a level of energy. I think it kind of adds to the production quality of my videos. And since we live in a day and age where everyone's attention spans are like 0.4 seconds, it kind of helps to cut out the ums and the buts or the dead airtime of your script or your videos so that you don't have just like empty space. Like people wanna stay in tune to your content. Jump cuts could technically help you achieve that. So I don't think there's anything wrong with the jump cut. I like using the jump cut. Now granted, you don't want every single word to be uh, jump cut because that would be kind of annoying. You know what I mean? So don't be afraid to use the jump cut, but at the same time, don't overuse it. There are a few little tips, tricks, and secrets, and advanced techniques that I figured out with the jump cut along the way that makes the jump cut seem a little bit more natural, smooth, more professional. So let's jump into my video editor. I'm using Adobe Premiere to edit my videos. To sign up for a free trial of Adobe Premiere or for more information on Adobe Premiere and the entire Creative Cloud suite, you can check that information out in the video description box below. So into Premiere we shall go. All right, so here we are in Adobe Premiere Pro. I have this footage over here from a motivational video Monday that I upload to this channel. And as you can see, there is a lot of dialogue here, <laughs> a lot. If this were to be one take with all my mess ups and everything in the footage, as you can see, we're pushing 15 minutes worth for what I think ended up being like a four or five minute video. So in this case, the jump cut's gonna help me out. I need a jump cut, otherwise this is gonna be a dragged out, boring with a lot of mess ups video. So once I have my footage on the timeline and I have my one take here with all my different dialogue, talking points that I have to splice up, here's what I'll do. I will go through to each individual section here where I have something I'm saying, and I will splice out the dead air, like we have right here, all these areas where I'm not saying anything, or if I'm looking at my script or thinking about what to say, maybe a mistake right here. I'm gonna cut out all that space in between, and how I do that is pretty simple. I'm gonna start to go on my timeline. I'll start from the beginning when I'm editing my own videos, but for the sake of demonstration purposes, I'll just zoom in here on a random section. I will use the mouse keys to scrub through until I get to the very front of that dialogue clip. The minute I hear my voice talking, I'm gonna go over here, click the blade tool, make sure you have the snap tool turned on as well. I scroll in, you'll see that I'm gonna make that cut right there where the dialogue starts. Right there. And then I'll usually listen, scrub through until I'm at the end of that dialogue. Click on. And right where I stop that dialogue, that's where I'm gonna make another cut. Go over here, use the blade tool again, make another cut. I'm gonna repeat that process for the next dialogue portion over here. I use the arrow keys. And as soon as I start hearing my voice, go over here to the blade tool, make another cut. Only for viewers to find out, maybe. And I will repeat this process for the entire length of this footage. There's another cut right there. And, and rightfully so. There's another cut right there. I don't know what I'm talking about in here. Something, ranting about something. And I'll just keep going along making these cuts. Eventually, if you get pretty good at it, you don't need to get real exact with the mouse. You could just start doing cuts like these and trim it up later, make it sound a little bit better if you need to. But the point is you wanna take out your ums, your butts, your dead air, any of your mistakes, so that on your timeline, you'll have something looking like this across your entire timeline with all the dialogue clips that are sounding good and the dialogue clips that you wanna use in your final video. For the sake of time, I already done that with three clips right here, and now I'm gonna show you how to actually do the jump cut. When I scroll in, what you're gonna wanna do, if you have these going back to back, these are the dialogue clips, you want them in this order. You're gonna wanna either drag this over till it snaps to the end of the previous clip, same here, or you could always just select the area in between the two clips, it'll highlight it and then you just click delete. So now if we listen to these back to back, these clips, I'm not gonna play this whole thing, but I'm just gonna play right here. Do something about it. YouTube figured this out and quickly fixed it by favoring watch. Now that doesn't sound bad. Sounds a little bit smoother than if I were to have stopped and thought about what to say. About it. That dead air right there, we wouldn't want that. That's why we did the jump cut. That's why we have these clips spliced up, but there's still a little bit of a pause there. About it. You it just doesn't seem as polished as it could. 
So here's the secret to my jump cut, here's what I do. I will zoom in here on the timeline, go to the start of that next clip, and this is where I could get a little bit more precise. Right there is actually where it starts, so I'm cutting out another frame, and I will drag it so that it overlaps. Now you don't wanna drag it like this, because then you're cutting out audio of your first clip. That doesn't work, that's gonna be a mistake, That that's a problem. So to preserve the audio of the first clip, but still have a jump cut, I'll actually drag the audio from the A1 track over here down to A2, and then I will drag this over till just about the end of that first clip. So now if we play these clips back to back. About. YouTube figure this out. Do, do something about. YouTube figure this out. It sounds a little bit more polished, and you could fine tune this by either dragging to the right and getting another extra frame out of that first clip. About. YouTube figured this and that sounds pretty perfect to me. This is what you call technically an L cut. We have overlapping audio from the first clip that goes into the second clip. See how it makes sort of like an L right here? The L, L, it's an L, hence an L cut. You see where I'm going with this? So the advanced technique for a jump cut is essentially just using a bunch of L cuts. And now we have a little bit of overlap from that audio. If we zoom in here, see this little bit right here? That's a little bit of overlap from the audio of the first clip going into the second clip, so it's not so abrupt. Now you see I'm alternating here. I have the audio and audio track one, audio and audio track two, audio and audio track one. I'll go back and forth like that to keep doing L cuts so that we have the jump cut with the L cut technique throughout the entire timeline. Alone, meaning. Now if you hear it, it's very subtle, but if you listen closely, just views alone, meaning. It sounds very smooth, it sounds like it flows into one another. Views alone, meaning. A little bit more professional in my opinion, it makes the overall quality of your audio sound a little bit more polished. And when you start to use this technique throughout your entire timeline and every single one of these clips throughout, once you're done editing and you put all your clips next to each other and your video's finished, it'll sound a little bit more clean, a little bit better flow, it'll maintain your rhythm. Alone, meaning. And it's one of those things that could take your video editing to the next level with a very minor technique that goes a long way and ultimately sounds a little bit more professional. And that's the secret to my infamous jump cut technique on this channel. Nothing too crazy but at the same time, nothing too simple. I'm certainly not the only YouTuber who uses this technique or has talked about it before. But seriously, don't be afraid to use the jump cut in this way. It helps you to polish up the energy, flow, and pace of your video. Go for it. For more of my filmmaking and photography tutorials on this channel on Thursdays, and for examples of this advanced jump cut technique in action, don't forget to subscribe and check out the other videos on this channel. And I hope you enjoy this jump cut tutorial. Just kidding, that, that's how you don't want to use the jump cut. Why did I think it was a good idea to end the video on a bad example?